Joining me now from Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., representing Virginia's 5th Congressional District, Congressman Denver Riggleman. Congressman, um, you've got to applaud the White House for at least laying out a blueprint that attempts to balance these, these deficits that are ballooning out of control right now. But also you have to give the White House credit for really defining the difference, especially as we go into this election in November, the difference between the Republican priorities and the Democrat priorities. And hopefully among the Republican priorities vis-a-vis -vis fiscal matters is eventually a, this crazy thing that most households call a balanced budget. Well, you know, I'm a business owner, so I actually have the book behind me, Craig, until I left. <laughs> I started reading it. It's amazing the amount, of, the amount of ideas that went into cutting the budget in a fiscal, responsible way. And it's a, that type of responsibility that we need to look at going forward. And I even put in a resolution called uh, HRES 834, which was the best is yet to come, which were policy prescriptions based on President Trump's State of the Union. And I was surprised that that got, that got shot down by the Democrats almost immediately. But really, fiscal responsibility and looking at these programs is what we should do. And, I, and I'm not quite sure why we can't at least have a starting point and talk about this in a bipartisan way. But it seems like the hyperbole from the left is not even going to allow us to get started at this point. You see, Congressman, you're showing that you're still relatively new to Washington, D.C. Uh, you have this uh, air about you <laughs> that you actually think things can get done in a bipartisan manner. But I want to talk about... Your resolution, you introduced HR, was it HR 834? Right. Um, HRES 834, yes. All right. Yep. Which is um, the Best is Yet to Come Act. I want to read from it real quick here. Policies that further expand the booming economic growth outlined by President Trump in his State of the Union address. Best is Yet to Come policy blueprint for the people of the United States as outlined by President Trump in his State of the Union address on February 4, 2020. I don't see any partisan wording in there. I don't see uh, any kind of stipulation that it's only going to help Republicans over Democrats, short people versus tall people. Seems pretty much across the board here that you're trying to help all Americans, which I think this is what the White House is trying to do as well. No, Graham, I'm 5'7", so don't, I try not to go <laughs> short people to tall people. That gets to be dangerous, by Sorry. the way, because you can tell of my incredible height here. But no, uh, it, it, I, we tried to write something from a business perspective. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been elected for 13 months. I'm glad you pointed out, Graham, I am new to this. Uh, but I think that people with real world ideas should be able to get involved in this process. But what I'm looking at the sausage making here, uh, it seems to me that no matter what we do, even if we try to have common sense, reasonable dialogue, the Democrats' sort of partisan nature right now and their hyperbole sort of drowns out everything. And, and instead of getting things done, I think they'd rather be famous on Twitter. What's that famous comment? You know, politics is Hollywood for ugly people. I think that's what we got right now. Our people want to be famous rather than get something done, Graham. And I, I, listen, I'm not into that. I don't need this job. Uh, we, I still have companies. I would rather do something for the American people, serve, and then get out of the way and let them do the best that they can do with their individual gifts and talents and not think the government should have their hands in our pockets everywhere we go. Prime example of what the White House is trying to do that makes total sense is this 26 percent budgetary cut to the EPA. I don't even oh, yeah. know why we need the EPA at the federal level since it's duplicated. Virtually every state has their version of the EPA. Why exactly do we need that? Why do we need the Department of Education, which, again, is supposed to be handled at the state level? HUD is being cut back. These are things that make sense. But you know what the president is doing here, Congressman? He's taking a machete to the swamp. And, and of course, the swamp doesn't want to give up its power. Well, they immediately went emotional on the president as soon as he put out his budget proposal. That's the first thing that lets me know there isn't a serious look at what he's proposing. And when you talk about things like the EPA in Virginia, it's the DEQ, right, Graham, the Department of Environmental Quality. And, you know, me trying to start a company, I had a war with them when I had a stream that would just get wet when it rained for three days. And we had to go into this massive sort of... Uh, effort, my wife and I, to try to mitigate that. And it cost us tens of thousands of dollars. We had to remove 40 trees. We had to remove soil. And we had to remove land in order to do this. And I thought, my goodness, we're destroying, you know, our environment because of a regulation that says we're helping the environment. We, at some point, have to have common sense to look at this. And we have to have adults in the room. Listen, everybody says there's the third wheel of politics, mandatory spending, discretionary spending. Why in the heck can't we come and start talking about this in a way that, that saves the republic going forward by getting the government to scale back and letting the states and individuals dictate their own future rather than some government hack 
thinking that they can. And that's what gets me angry. I fought against this uh, since I was a private citizen. That's why I'm here today. Let's get the government out of our business and let's have some common sense discussions rather than this partisan hyperbole that gets spewed out every time there's one thing that comes out of the White House. I think that's what most Americans would agree with. Unfortunately, there's a certain percentage of Americans that tend to elect these people that are radical and that don't want to do what you want to do and, and work in the best interests of the American people. The DOJ investigation uh, into what I call the greatest political scandal ever perpetuated on this republic. I'm talking about the Durham investigation. We're getting a lot of questions That's on this. There's been a lot of reporting in the media. I don't know that you have an inside track or not, but I'm just kind of curious. What are you hearing in terms of a timeline and when this thing's going to be released? Well, the timeline, I think, is going to be, it's going to pick up here a little bit. It's going to be more aggressive now that impeachment is over. Also, just to let you know, Graham, I did FISA work in the National Security Agency mm. uh, back in 2007 area with the counterterrorism mission management cell. And there was such a, an amazing amount of responsibility that went into building those packages for any type of FISA activities. And what we saw with this, and I have the report on my desk, I'm reading it, since I do have technical knowledge on it, it is egregious. And what I think is going to happen is you're going to find some real surprises uh, when testimony starts on how egregious the FISA process was. And I believe that's why you're going to see sort of an aggressive timeline going forward, Graham. So I, I'm pretty interested myself, but being a former intelligence officer in the Air Force, knowing this process, I can't wait to add some of my technical expertise to, to some of those questions going forward. Real quick, this is a complicated question, but do you not believe, as I believe, there's a better way than the FISA courts? And, and is the FISA courts really running concurrent with the United States Constitution and the way the framers set up our court system where it's not in secret? Certainly FISA appears to be, you know, veiled in a, in a cloak of secrecy, and then we see this abuse. Is it not time to, to revisit FISA? It's time. Uh, I've been talking to a group of not only former congressmen and congresswomen, but also people on the Hill, that we not only need more transparency, but we need to look at FISA in a new way now. And listen, FISA has, has done a lot of great things as far as stopping terrorist attacks, and I know that firsthand, and going after these individuals. However, FISA is ripe for abuse if it's always behind the door, and, and me and you have seen that. And it's time to revamp it. Uh, I'm happy to be involved with that, but we need to have a FISA process that's fair, transparent, and that people are aware of, and they even know how it acts and, and, and what it's supposed to do for the American people. And that's why, again, I'm looking forward to revamping. And I think you're exactly right. You're dead on. It's time to revamp the FISA process. And we need to use the, the, what we get from this investigation. We need to use that to improve it immediately. All right, Congressman, I know that you can't do this because you're on the job. You're in the rotunda right there. But I'm going to mention your website for re-election. Sure uh, it's <laughs> denverforcongress.com. Denver for congress.com if folks want more information about this gentleman who's from Virginia uh, part of the war to protect the second amendment number one and on that website by the way I should point out that you sure. have an avenue for folks to possibly become a delegate to the Republican convention in right. August and that's rather fun uh, congressman thanks very much for joining us want to see more videos like this click on the link below and subscribe to one america news on youtube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that one america news is added to your lineup call and subscribe today